Yeah, I know they're impressive, but they're not what we're after. Come on and get up in the dropship. I'll explain on the way. All right, new guy, here's the deal. Our probes are discovering new species almost every day, and seven new horned dinosaurs have been found all across the central sector. And when the boys upstairs need to document new species of horned dinosaur, they call me. No one's hunted more Triceratops, tracked more Chasmosaurs, or wrestled more Diabloceratops than me. Especially not you. But since it's your first week here on the job as photographer in the Central Ceratopsian Division, I thought there's no better way to break you in than showing you the ropes myself. We've got seven newly discovered species to document for the higher-ups, so grab that camera of yours and let's begin. Our first stop is the Great Lake. I know we've been flying over most of it, but what we're after likes to congregate round the lake itself. The little guys known as Zuni Ceratops. As evidenced by their size, these little guys don't make much of an impact around here, also since they've managed to stay hidden for decades. Their dark hide gives them great camouflage, doubled with their stripes for blending in with what few plants grow out here in the crater. They don't have any horns on their nose, but they've got some pretty biggins over the eyes, mostly used for fighting rival males. They'd rather run or hide from predators. Oh, and speaking of, here comes someone to ruin our trip. How about you go test your worth and see if you can go knock that fella out? Well, well, well. Good work there. I honestly wasn't sure if you had it in you. Gotta say, I'm rather impressed. Reminded me of when I saved Big Bertha from a raptor. She was just a little trike back then, but those critters are tough. Anyway, that'll keep him down for a bit. I noticed this little guy froze up before that raptor snuck out of the bushes. I guess those huge eyes of his are great for spotting predators from afar. I'm sure the lab boys will love to hear that. Alright, snap a good picture of him, we gotta get going. Just got a call from the survey station. Apparently there are a couple of the new species migrating through the plains. We need to get there quick. This fella right here is Eo Triceratops, and I can see a lot of Big Bertha in him. Now you might be wondering why we named it Eo Triceratops when we already have Triceratops here on the planet. Well, aside from the fact that it looks like one, there's a sad tale that comes with the name. Since Eo Triceratops is believed to have evolved into Triceratops over the years, it's assumed that one basically took the place of the other. And from what we can tell, Triceratops is pretty much causing Eo Triceratops to go extinct. The two are just too similar to live together in harmony. And with Triceratops being as successful as it is, there's just no way for Eo Trax to bounce back. In fact, the fella you're looking at now is one of about 65 EO tracks left on the planet. Go ahead and snap a picture for Big Bertha. I'd like to show her one of her cousins so that she'll probably never get to see again. Ah, here's our next target. These are Nidoceratops, a very controversial dinosaur back on Earth. Some scientists think it's its own dinosaur, while some just think it's a growing trike. Hence the name meaning insufficient horned face. But up here on the dinosaur planet, it's its own thing. These dinosaurs are migratory. They come through the Great Lake Plains on their way back to their nesting grounds. They typically don't like to spend too much time out here. It's very open. They're powerful dinosaurs and surprisingly good swimmers, but they're not that fast. And most of the predators out here are, so we all gotta keep an eye out. Go ahead and get your picture. The Nidoceratops are moving on, and I think we should too. Vingar Fjords, a place of scenic beauty, swamps as far as the eye can see, and way too many Spinosaurs, if you ask me. But we'll not worry about them. We're here for this guy, Utah Ceratops. Since he's up here on a distant planet and not, well, Utah, the name seems a little redundant, but you know how marketing works. 
This one looks a lot like Chasmosaurus, and it's a wonder we haven't seen more of them. Maybe they just blend in too well with the green out here. With those little horns, these guys aren't much for offense, but they're great on defense. That massive frill shield is perfect for deterring the jaws of almost any predator. It'd take a real sneaky hunter like Troodon or Dilophosaurus to get past those defenses. And I don't think this one's particularly enjoying our company. Get that picture and let's go. I can show Big Bertha. She likes seeing how much bigger her horns are than everyone else's. Oh, the blasted jungles of Gravit Sapa. You know, I can never tell if I'm inhaling smoke or fog out here. I feel like this island could explode at any moment, and I hate coming here. But we've got a job to do, and there it is. Spinops. This is a bizarre looking one for sure, and it seems to fit in right here at home in this weird place. Spinops is a Centrosaurian dinosaur, like Styracosaurus or Rubeosaurus, ones that we've already documented here on the dinosaur planet. Now the Spinops' hide and shape help it blend in really well out here in the jungle, and it probably uses that huge snout of its to dig up some more nutritious plants under the ground. Early scouting reports suggested that Spinops might actually eat the cacti that grow in the deserts around here, which would be pretty unique for a horned dinosaur on this planet. Let's head out to the desert and see if we can get some proof. And there we go, eating a cactus right out of the ground. Alright, get your picture and let's get going. This place gives me the creeps. I sometimes feel like the plants are watching me. Ah, good old Fort Siskin. As surprising as this may be for you to hear, I was not a part of that original scouting mission that had the unfortunate Rex encounter. But oh, I heard the stories. They're what made me want to join Dino Hunt Corp in the first place. But anyway, those are stories for another time. Here's what we're after. Achillosaurus. This is a medium-sized Ceratopsian, and the ones on Earth were known for their distinct bone bosses on the face small horns behind the eyes, and the long spines on the top of the shield. The ones up here don't have the smaller eye horns, but they've got the bony heads for sure. These animals are pretty aggressive most of the time, so we best keep our distance. We don't want to upset a cranky male. You know, those parrot-like beaks are probably used for... Uh oh Look out! <laughs> Conflatted, blasted Ceratosaurus. This is what happens when you put the brain of a bird in the body of a bulldozer. The stupid males get so crazy during the mating season that they have no clue what's going on. <sighs> well, we're not going to see any more Achillosaurs after that. But I guess we had our own little Fort Siskin carnivore encounter. Grab your picture and let's hit the road. And our last stop is good old Basmashi Rocks, many a hunter's favorite destination. Let's see if we can find what we're after. Shouldn't be too hard to spot. Ah, there we go. The Regal Titanoceratops. This monster of a dinosaur has one of the largest skulls of any land animal, almost nine feet long. That's insane. These huge animals have very little to fear out here. Their enormous size keeps them pretty safe, and if anything is foolish enough to give them a go, they've got two swords, a steak knife, and one enormous shield to counteract that. These are pretty solitary animals, from what we can tell. You might see them roaming around in pairs, but other than that, they're just too big for these islands to support massive herds. Of course, that just makes Satin One all the more special. Of course, not as special as Big Bertha. But you get the idea. Alright, we've documented seven new species of Ceratopsians here on the dinosaur planet. You did good today, kid. You proved your merit and held your own. Come on, there's someone I want you to meet. 
So there you go guys, seven new Ceratopsian dinosaurs created by Ornithomimid 1. We've showcased a lot of his work last summer, and these aren't too new, I think he made them a few months ago, but you know how busy things get. So I'm glad we were finally able to cover them in all their glory. Ornithomimid 1 has been instrumental in fleshing out the dinosaur roster of planet FMMUV32, and his work in creating canon-style dinosaurs is amazing. He has an extensive library of canon-style dinosaur models over on the Carnivore Saga forums, so I'll leave a link to that page in the description for you to find these seven new Ceratopsians and a host of others. And guys, thanks as always for watching. We're getting really close to 2,000 subscribers, which by itself is mind-blowing. And I hope you guys are just as excited for the upcoming Carnivores videos as I am. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know which of these Ceratopsians is your favorite. Mine is the Titanoceratops. It just looks so imposing and stoic. Thanks again for watching, guys. You are all truly the best. And I will see you guys next time.